captain has turned on the seatbelt light. Please take your seat and fasten your seatbelts. Thank you. You can add as many word source documents to a Doc to Help project as you want. Then, later when you build your target, Doc to Help will take the source documents and your various project settings, put them together, and process your output. If you want to create a new Word document, you should first make sure the source template you want to use is selected. To do this, open the Home ribbon, click the Source Template drop-down, and choose the template. For more details about templates, see the Templates and Styles video. After the source template is selected, go to the Documents window pane and click this button. Give the new document a name and click Save. The document is added to the Documents window pane in the doc to help project. The Word document also opens automatically, so you can start editing it. If you want to import existing Word documents into your project, click this button in the Documents window pane. Then, in the wizard that opens, find and select the documents and click Import. Your documents are added to the Documents window pane. You can use the arrow keys in the local toolbar to rearrange the order of the documents, because the order shown is how the content will appear in the output. If you selected the option in the New Project Wizard to include a new Microsoft Word document, a glossary document will be added to your project automatically. However, you can flag any of your Word source documents to serve as a glossary by right-clicking it and selecting Glossary. The content in that file should use specific glossary styles and will be included in both online and print-based output. From the Documents window pane, double-click any of your documents to work on them in Word. In new Word source documents that you create, you'll notice that the styles have the same look as the source template that was used. In fact, any content that appears in the source template also appears in the source document. This means that you can edit or create custom source templates to use as example documents. For more information about creating custom source templates, see this topic in the online help. If you imported an older Word document, you may notice that your styles don't look the same as your source template. To use the style settings from a source template, select File, then Options in the Word source document. Click Add-ins. Then, from the Manage drop-down, choose Templates and click Go. In the dialog that opens, make sure the correct source template is selected. If it isn't, click Attach and then select it. Finally, click the checkbox that says Automatically Update Document Styles and click OK. At this point, you can just edit your Word source document just like you normally would. You can add text, images, tables, and so on. You can also apply styles to your content, and you can create and use any custom styles you want. For your headings, you should apply Word's standard heading styles. doc to help will use these styles to determine where to break up your topic into little topics when you generate online output. Styles, for lack of a better word, are good. Try not to use local formatting, which means applying formatting directly to content rather than using a style. When possible, avoid doing that. Local formatting is inefficient. Depending on the source template you selected, your Word source document is going to have either one or two special doc to help ribbons in it. These ribbons have features that are unique to doc to help Features that you couldn't include if this were just an ordinary, everyday Word document. You will also see the doc to help project panel, which includes many of the same features that you can access in doc to help Using features in the doc to help project panel will save you time, because you won't have to switch back and forth between Word and doc to help For example, you might do any of the following. Click the Inline Text button to create a special feature where text is shown in a pop-up in online output, like this. Click the Keyword button to add a new keyword, which will be used in the index that's produced in your output, like this. You can also drag and drop the new keyword into your document to create a link, like this.
Click the Conditional Text button to apply a condition to content that you've selected. This lets you flag content for inclusion in some outputs, but not others. For example, you might want a certain paragraph to show up in your PDFs, but not in your online help. Like this. Click the Variable button to insert a variable, which is reusable content that you create in your Doc to Help project. It lets you quickly and easily control that content from one place, rather than retyping it everywhere it exists in the document. Like this. You can also drag and drop the variable into your document to create a link, like this. Click the Collapsible Section button to create an effect in online output where the user clicks a hotspot to show or hide content under that hotspot, like this. Click the Image Map Editor button to set links on parts of an image. In your online output, this lets users navigate to other information, depending on where they click on an image. Like this. Click on the Multimedia button to embed a movie, such as a YouTube video, like this. Click the Cross Reference button to create a link that displays as a hyperlink in online output, but as a page reference in print-based output, like this. Drag and drop topics from the Doc to Help project panel to create a link, like this. Or double click on them to open the topic in a new window, like this. And those are just some of the unique Doc to Help features that you can add to a Word source document. For more information about these and other features, see this topic in the online help.